Welcome, Utah's Fly Corner. I'm going to show you how to tie a partridge and buy it. I'm going to tie these up for the fall and winter. They work pretty well in the spring. Uh, I'm going to show you how to tie a red one. I tie them up in uh, different colors. Uh, the bites I use um, come from uh, craft craft feathers. Uh, you got the bites on the nice bites on the sides here. Um, this side of the feather um, can be used for midge patterns. Makes pretty nice uh, looking midge bodies. Um, but these are the bites uh, they can use. They got real tiny ones all the way up to nice nice longer ones. Um, and the pack uh, I'm getting from uh, this feather pack here. It's a uh, craft. They're craft feathers. Now uh, you can get them at a craft shop. Cost you a couple bucks, like two fifty or something, something like that. It cost me, and uh, get forty feathers, tons of feathers. Um, and you can see colors that you get. You get orange, purple, yellow, greens, uh, and reds. Um, different packs might have different colors, but the hook I'm going to be using is a Dodge. 1560 size 16 uh, I'm going to show you I'm going to use a brown Montana flyco thread I like having the darker underbody to it but bring it back not the sprout bend on these hooks so you're not going to get it to the barb uh, without going around the bend the bend starts about halfway between the barb and the point um, so it's we're going to stop there. Now my bite. Um, with bites that are dyed like this, I mean this thing is this thing is as red as red could be. Um, so with bites like this, uh, they tend to be a little bit brittle. Um, so you can, you can get them wet. Um, you can spit on them, suck on them for a little bit. Work some moisture into them. Uh, but or you can tie with them dry. Now with the bite, they got a concave side, convex side, and a, and a non-convex. That's the convex side. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is tie with the convex side facing down. But I'm not going to tie it in right at the point. We catch it in on top. The loose turn. Another loose turn and start tightening up. Those loose turns will ensure that the bite doesn't want to snap on you. You might buy it up. I'm gonna get my hackle pliers. Cause these are short bites. In your first turn with your bite, pretty much always have to work it into position get it to lay the way you want I'll just wrap it up and turn in front of the other Oop. cross your thread So one turn on the bayet, one on the shank, do that about three times. Hackle pliers off. Monster hackle pliers for a size 16. Huh? Figure's easier to handle. Make sure that's tied in, tidy up a little bit. You got yourself a nice by a body. You can wrap it the other way with the bite, and uh, it'll give you a little bit more pronounced, uh, exposed, like kind of rib sticking up. Um, like you can see with, like with this fly, that'll give you that kind of rib effect. Um, but now I'm going to put some dubbing on for the thorax. Using some uh, Stella Dub. It's a nice uh, 
goldeny, creamy yellow color. Everybody. Now the partridge feather. Uh, it's a size 16, and as you know, uh, your partridge skins uh, tend to have a uh, large partridge feathers on them. So I'm going to show you a little trick how to use your big ones in place you know, for small flies. I'm going to trim off all my fluff. Now here's my feather. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hold it by the tip, stroke the fibers back until we get even amount. Now what I'm looking for is so that the tips are all the same length. And that's the tip area there where it started to taper away again. So we're going to take the tip area Even is good. Take the tip area and snip it out. We're going to bring it back up. Bring our feather back in. And we're going to measure our length. Now you can have it real short, you can have it long, you can have it super long. But for these, I liked it to be about, about to the point. Pinch. So where my pinch is sitting. And all I'm doing is just pinching those fibers around this around the shank. I'm gonna take one loose turnover, then really tighten up. And as you tighten up, it'll cause the fibers to spin around the shank. We will lift up. Take one turn or two on top of the feather. Let's snip them out nice and close. Nice and close. Bring your thread back up to where you tie it in. Get right up against them and take a nice tight turn. It'll cause them to splay even more. And you can take your fingernail. Just work them into position if you have some spots where you're missing some. Rotate your vise around, take a look. Looks good enough. Not, tr not trying to tie a fly here for a uh, for a magazine or anything. Tie one for catching fish. And this one will certainly catch fish. Whip finish my head. A little bit of feather exposed there. It's one penny of a uh, hand whip finish. Can do stuff like that. That piece covered up. Tighten up. Snip the thread. Voila. Got yourself a partridge and buy it. Done using a, a feather that was way too big for tying a size 16. That's the fly. Put a little head cement on the head if you'd like. Gussy it up. Use some uh, Sally Hansons. I don't generally put uh, head cement on my flies, um, but with my wet flies I like to just make the head shiny on them. Um, but that's basically the fly. Um, you tie them up in uh, green. That's the green from the pack. This is the orange from the pack. That's the uh, that's the orange. That's the yellow. And here's that purple. And purple's really nice looking. And quite effective in the in the winter.
but thanks for watching Johnny Utah check me out on my blog www.utahslycorner.blogspot.com